Number 10, Focused Assault. This dash deals 700% damage and applies Expose after a 1 second delay. This is certainly Merc's strongest ability. Keep in mind, Merc is not really known for his single target damage, and this ability is no exception. However, what this ability is good at is crowd control. 700% damage might not sound like a ton, but when you're doing it to 10 enemies at once, that damage adds up pretty fast. Also, the exposed debuff is a huge asset here since procking it shortens your cooldowns and increases damage. So when you combine this with Merc's other exposed abilities like Slicing Winds and his primary, you can dish out a lot of damage in a very short period of time. Now, it does take some skill to use effectively, and again, it does struggle in single target situations, the Mithrix fight being the primary example, but even in those cases, it's still Merc's best damaging ability, and it's also, in my opinion, one of the best mobility skills. So if you don't like it, you can, uh, you know, suck my gamer flaps. Number 9, Flood. Really, you could make an argument for any Avoid Fiend's abilities being on this list, but I picked Flood because it has the most damage. The Uncharged version deals 600% damage, which on its own is really good. That's the same amount of damage you'd get from Multi's Rebar Puncher, but the Charge Shot is even better with 1,100% damage. Easily one of the strongest secondaries in the game, it also gives you a little bit of momentum, so you can cancel fall damage pretty effectively. Now, it is slightly different in Void Fiend's Corrupted form, the damage is the same, but the blast is twice as big and it shoots in more of an arc. This ability is a very strong band procker, and one of the main reasons Void Fiend is as busted as he is. Like, how are you going to tell me a perfectly placed grenade from Commando is 700% damage, but an uncharged secondary from Void Fiend is 600% damage? Your box, if you're listening, please buff Frag Grenade. It's such a fun ability, but god damn is it underwhelming. <laughs> Number 8, Ice Spear slash Nanobomb. Okay, so this is kind of cheating. I know this is two abilities, but god damn it, they're both so good. Really, any of Artificer's abilities could go here, with the exception of Fire Diarrhea, of course. That one I, uh, that one I don't condone. Artie gets a lot of hate, but honestly, she's easily a top 3 survivor. Again, her abilities are just very balanced. She has arguably two of the strongest secondaries in the game. Nanobomb is a lot like the previous entry, Flood, but it has a bit more area of effect and damage, with an uncharged shot dealing 400% damage and a full charge dealing 2000% damage. Ice Spear has less, sorry. Cast Nano Spear. Okay, that's not real. Nobody has ever called it that. This must be one of them, uh, one of the Mandela effects. Baron Stain Bears. I always remember it being the Brown Stain Bears because they always got that big old heckin' brown stain. Anyway, I like Ice Spear better because of the freezing effect. Having a 30% execute on all non boss enemies is fucking incredible. This ability is the equivalent of three and a half guillotines, and it works on more than just elites. I think that more than compensates for the lower burst damage, but I may be wrong. The fact that you can freeze Mithrix, the final boss, is why this ability is here. Seriously, if you have a few backup mags, you don't even really have to fight him. But you will have to fight me if you think Artificer is a bad survivor. Her skills don't suck, yours do. If you are enjoying this video, consider hitting the subscribe button. My wife left me and this channel is all I have. Number 7, Stationary Turrets. Now, as much as I despise Engineer, I have to admit the turrets are OP as hell. Specifically the stationary turrets. The mobile turrets are interesting, but I don't think they're quite as useful as the stationary ones. The difference between the two basically boils down to this. Say you have a small child that is very rambunctious and energetic and is just running around. Can't focus in class, gets up every 30 seconds to sharpen his pencil. You know the type. So what you do is you say, hey kid, you need to chill the fuck out, and you give him some devil's lettuce. Some good old fashioned Mary Jane, if you will. And you see, what will happen is this small child will indeed chill the fuck out. He will no longer need to get up to sharpen his pencil. And because of this, it will actually allow him to utilize Bungus. And it will, in fact, raise his proc coefficient from 0.6 to 1. So just reflect on that for a moment and uh, think about how awesome that analogy was. So yeah, I think stationary turrets are a lot better. Big thing to note about them is you can place them inside walls, and this prevents them from taking damage for the most part. Sometimes they do still die. It's pretty broken. You can also place them outside the Mithrix arena while you just sit back and eat a McDonald or something. I don't know. You can also use the turrets to get bands on Aqueduct. Enough said. Number six, M99 Sniper. This is the most ridiculous primary we've ever seen. Technically, it's a secondary, but come on. This ability is what you're going to be using 90% of the time. So on its own, it does 1000% damage, which is ludicrous. I can't believe it does that much. But if you hit a perfect reload, it does even more, taking it to 1500% damage. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy. And what's more, if you hit the weak spot, it doubles it to 3000% damage. Hopefully, I get it. You got to sell your DLC, but 3000% damage? 
Really? Again, Commando's alt special, 700% damage. Railgunner's primary, 3,000% damage. So obviously, this is an amazing band procker. If you get a few crowbars, you just shred everything. Of course, there is some skill involved to get the maximum damage. You have to hit the reloads, and you need to have decent aim to hit the sweet spots. But as long as you don't identify as a drunk uncle with Parkinson's, you're going to do decently well on Railgunner. Number five, Charged Gauntlet. This is an iconic ability and is a big reason I consider Loader to be one of, if not the best survivor in the game. Charged Gauntlet is a punch that, when fully charged, deals 2,700% damage. However, this is further increased by momentum. The faster you move, the more damage this attack deals. And I don't think there's a hard cap on that either, with the only limit to how much damage this attack deals being just what the game can handle. And obviously your skill as a player. On any other survivor, this would be really good, but on loader, it's especially effective since the survivor is all about speed and momentum. Grappling around, mastering swings, you can get a tremendous amount of damage with relatively few items. Of course, items will help with this, the most notable ones being Kaijaro and Runald Bands, which is something you can get for free in most runs if you learn how to do the Pylon Press. Also, this works incredibly well with every common damage boosting item, those being crit, focus crystals, crowbars, armor piercing rounds, and watches. Most abilities can only effectively use a few of those, but Charge Gauntlet takes advantage of all five of them. It's a really good movement option, and let's be real, this ability is what's keeping the speedrun community for Risk of Rain 2 afloat. Also, Kajaro isn't a real word, stop cyberbullying me about the way I pronounce it. They put a K next to a J, like, what do you want me to do? Number four, Cryo Charge. So remember all that stuff I just said about the M99 Sniper? Well, that applies to Railgunner's alt special, Cryo Charge, with some key differences. Instead of 1000% base damage, Cryo Charge does 2000% base damage. And if you include hitting weak spots, that's 4000% damage, oh my god. And like the normal sniper, this does pierce through enemies, but it has a much wider berth, so it hits way more enemies when firing into a large group. You have the option of not scoping in with this ability, but that doesn't hinder your ability to shoot weak spots either. So if you already know where they are, you can just spray and pray. It also doubles as a mobility skill. If you put down a mine and fire cryo charge at the ground right before it goes off, you can launch across the entire map in a matter of seconds. But wait, there's more. This is one of only two abilities in the game that has a proc coefficient higher than one, with the other one being the default variant of this exact skill. Cryo charge has a 1.5 proc coefficient, so that means 50% more likely to proc an ATG, 50% more likely to proc polyloot, and you're 50% more likely to have an erection lasting more than 4 hours. Why they felt this ability needed to have a 1.5 proc coefficient? Fuck if I know, but that's not even all there is to this ability. On top of all of that, it has the freezing effect. I'm done, who okayed this? I refuse to believe the same people that made Commando's Grenade are the same people that made this ability. I know I'm beating a dead horse, but please, just fix grenades, I beg you, please fix them. I think there's an argument to be made for cryo charge being higher, but the next three spots have even higher damage potential than this one. Number three, Diablo Strike. Did you guys not have phones? Yeah. For a long time, this was considered a meme ability and not viable in runs. Here's a clip of why that is not true. So yeah, this ability deals 40,000% damage. That's 10 times stronger than a cryo charge crit with Railgunner. And that's only the tip of the iceberg, because the value of items gets exponentially higher the stronger the attack. Take Ice Band, for example. If you proc it with an attack dealing 400% damage, the band is going to deal 1000% damage. If you proc Ice Band on an attack dealing 40,000% damage, that Ice Band is going to deal 100,000% damage. Assuming you had one crowbar, that will then deal 175,000% damage. And that's only with two items. So you can imagine how ridiculous this gets when you consider a normal run with upwards of 50 items. Diablo Strike is the king of damage. Now, of course, there are a few strings attached, the primary one being it has a 40 second cooldown and takes 20 seconds to fire. So in order to use this effectively, you have to train enemies into it at the right time or learn the timings. If that's something you're interested in, a link in the description. Now, fortunately, Captain can utilize this very effectively with shock beacons. Shock beacons will just stun enemies indefinitely. So by putting them at strategic choke points, you can lock all of the enemies into one spot, at which point you don't need to time your Diablo, it'll just work. The other downside is you can damage yourself. This is pretty straightforward to dodge, but if you're trying to lead enemies into the strike, it can be easy to get caught off guard. Now this can actually be used to your benefit on the moon. If you aim Diablo at yourself, you can skip pillars. The reason this doesn't kill is because it's abusing a mechanic called one-shot protection. But be careful, because stuff like bleed, needle tick, and poly loot can still kill you, so watch out. Number two, 
Despacito. I mean, Desperado. <laughs> that was the worst joke I've ever heard. Come on, man. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll fix it in post. Tommy, edit in a better joke. It's so sad Steve Jobs died of Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. Wow, that was pretty funny. I am definitely aware of what he put there at the time of recording. Anyway, Desperado is the second strongest ability in the game. If you didn't know, the way this works is every time you get a kill with Desperado, it increases its damage by 10%. So if you get 10 kills with Desperado, you've doubled your damage output. This is particularly strong on Bandit, whose passive allows him to guarantee a critical strike if you're behind an enemy. This adds it pretty quickly, especially with items like crowbars and watches. Now this does reset every stage, if it didn't it would be the most busted thing ever, but even within a given stage you can easily get 40 to 50 stacks before the teleporter. This ability has infinite potential, it's a get out of jail free card no matter how bad your run is looking. If you have Desperado, there is hope. If you feel so inclined you can farm stacks on the moon until you have enough to one shot Mithrix, obviously that would take a while, but if the goal is to win the run, you can't ask for much better than a decently strong attack that scales every time you use it. And there's only one other ability in the realm of infinite damage potential, which brings me to the number one spot, Poison. In terms of raw damage output, Poison by far has the most potential. Now if you're thinking, I've used Poison, it doesn't kill very fast, you would be correct. However, the reason Poison is so good is because it deals damage proportional to the enemy's health bar. If you're curious, that's 1% of the enemy's health bar every second, or 100% of your base damage a second, whichever stat is higher. So if you're level 1, with no items, fighting a level 99 enemy, poison will deal significant damage. Where poison really shines is with Epidemic. With this ability, you can poison every enemy on the map, assuming they're packed tightly enough. Now poison does have a cap of 5000% base damage a second, but that's something you won't typically run into in normal gameplay. Even if you do, it's still 5,000% damage a second. You can't do much better than that. In a recent live stream, I attempted 16 player difficulty in Eclipse 8, and it was one of the most challenging runs I've ever attempted. Enemies were 16 times stronger, and chests were 16 times more expensive. The only way I got through it was with poison. It was slow, took 70 minutes to clear stage 1, but it was doable. Poison will always kill enemies. There's no outscaling it, there's no dodging it. Poison will consistently kill. It's such a staple for Acrid. Opting to take Blight instead of Poison turns Acrid from one of the strongest survivors to easily the weakest. Cap made an excellent breakdown on Poison and Blight, and I would encourage you guys to go watch it. Obviously, take this video with a grain of salt. There were a lot of abilities that didn't make the cut. Stuff like Retool, Void Fiend's Heal, the many, many, many mobility skills. Frag Grenades, okay, maybe not that one. I tried to keep this list consolidated to pure damage output, but mobility is something I would like to cover maybe in a future video. Thank you to my members for supporting the channel. If you want to have access to exclusive emos and a custom Werther's Original badge, smack that join button. Not necessary, but very appreciated. Ta-ta for now.